move the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee to order at seven uh, at nine <laughs> thirty-four. So we have a, a quorum in, in front of us here. First on the agenda, we'll do um, Sheriff uh, Committee. We will uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes from the July twenty-third meeting. Moved by um, Supervisor Sokol, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. <coughs> okay. Sean, would you like to come on up? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the Sheriff's Office has been working on a grant through uh, Assemblyman Steck's office uh, since uh, late fall last year, beginning beginning of this year. Uh, with that said, the uh, the grant itself is coming through the Dormitory Authority of New York State, and what we had applied for uh, back in the beginning of the year was $100,000 to purchase four marked patrol vehicles. The process with them has gone extremely slow. I'm si uh, sorry to report. However, we do have approval from DASNY uh, via email that they have approved our grant. However, there are several other layers in state government that it goes to, I believe the Comptroller's Office, Attorney General's Office, and maybe something else. With that said, uh, we're under a time crunch. Uh, the budget for this grant was done with budgeting done for um, tourist police cars. Uh, the last day we can order tourist police cars is September 10th of this year. Those cars are going away. They're not going to make them anymore. <coughs> so with that said, uh, I had met with uh, our county administrator. Uh, he's been very helpful with this process. And we would like to amend our budget now for the $100,000, knowing that we'll get reimbursed for this money. Okay. Motion to bring that to the floor. Moved by Supervisor Simpson, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Discussion? Supervisor Simpson. Very common with that. We, we've had um, some funding that came in through that, and it does take a long time. You know, about 22 months, 18 months. Okay. Supervisor Wild and Supervisor Bramer. Um, Sean, when do we when do we think we're, we're going to get the money from them? And uh, as a follow up to that, um, can we place an order contingent upon some additional approvals from the state? So to limit our liability. You know, in, in, in conversations with the county administrator, the vast majority of the grants that I deal with, you cannot purchase anything until you have their approval and you have a contract in place. Uh, we reached out to our representative at DASNY, and she assured us that it's not uncommon for agencies to buy stuff prior to the final approvals coming through. Okay, Supervisor Bramer. Well, that was my question. Do we we don't have final approval of the grant? We do not have a contract in place. We have approval through DASNY. Okay. There's other layers of state government that it goes okay. through. So we have, we don't have nothing. We just don't have the contract. But that's Correct. normal for DASNY. Okay. According to the, the emails that the county administrator and I received, that this is, we should be okay. Okay. Supervisor Diamond, did you have a comment? Yeah, similar to the two questions were asked. You're looking to amend the budget. Where do you plan on uh, getting the money for the purchase prior to the commitment from New York State? I, w I guess I'll go to back to the county administrator. Well, it's expense authority, $100,000 of expense authority w that will allow them to buy the uh, cars prior to September 10th. Uh, and then when the reimbursement comes in, uh, the reimbursement will net out against the expense. Yeah, but so where are we? Yeah, where's the actual cash coming from? It'll come from DASNY. Finance. Finance. Oh, so you need finance. approval from the Finance Committee. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. Yep. The, on the, the motion that's be, before us here, one is uh, amending the budget to show $100,000 of anticipated revenue uh, from other state aid and uh, appropriating $100,000 for uh, the law enforcement auto equipment. So, yeah, Ms. McGowan, did you have something? No. Okay. No. Surprise, no. Thank you. Um, Sean, you mentioned the Taurus. Um, what's the uh, replacement vehicle, and is there a price increase for something comparable? 
for 2019 once this window closes the only three police vehicles out there will be the Chevrolet Tahoe the uh, Ford Explorer the police version of it and the uh, Dodge Charger and yes unfortunately the prices do go up on those vehicles Okay, Supervisor Diamond. Yeah, one more question. What is your anticipated timeline to get confirmation from the entire agency to New York State to get the approval? DASNY told us it would be approximately three to four months. Just bear in mind, from the time that we order the cars, it takes about three months to receive them. We don't actually pay for the cars until we take delivery. Right. Yep. Um, Treasurer Swan, I know that you've voiced in the past not buying things without a, a contract in place, but this seems to be a unique situation. How's the feeling from the treasurer's office? I uh, talked with uh, the county administrator about this already, and it's not my favorite position to be in, but I'm okay with it. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Okay, we'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. <laughs> thank you, Under Sheriff. I'd like to, before we close the um, Sheriff's uh, Committee here, uh, we did meet with... We have one more agenda item for uh, emergency services. Right, but before we back oh, off I'm of, sorry. of this, um, we, we have furthered the discussion with uh, SPCA coverage in, in the county. We seem to be making progress with that. It's not yet a done deal. So, um, also, there was um, a, a question, Sheriff, uh, from last month there about the high population at the jail uh, if we knew what the reason for the, the current high population in the jail. Were you able to find anything out about that? Well, uh, we were. Um, I think what we, there was a lot of moving parts, but the fact that um, I'm wrong, a lot of the, a lot of the stuff was uh, stymied at the uh, at the, at the courts. There okay. were a lot of people backed up in the court situation, so they get stuck in our jail, and that seems to be a lot of it. Uh, I spoke to Jason, and we were, we're trying to do some other things to move along, so right now we actually moved move some people out. Um, we got some federal inmates back, so we get some runs again, so we seem to have fixed that. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that update. If there's nothing to more. Friend, I got a question. Yes, you mentioned uh, previously about the discussions with the uh, SPCA. Correct. Um, at our last committee meeting, we had a, an in-depth discussion on whether the other respondee to the RFP was going to be brought in to give the interview by this committee here. What is the status of that conversation? It, that? Yes, to detail out my quick comment on things there. Uh, SPCA of Upstate New York came in, um, met with the Sheriff's Office County Administrator. I was uh, there. Um, uh, Director of Purchasing was there. Maybe a few others, and um, you know, d discussed the financials on on that. And they um, they do not charge for a lot of the work that they do do. There is a legality, though, that they cannot do some of the work that we need to have done in this this county because Would, of wouldn't it make sense to have this committee sit in on that interview? I certainly have questions that I'd like to talk to them uh, directly with in regards to the proposal. Sure, we can uh, as as we move it down to have the whole committee there just to. Um, go through that that RFP for some of the technicalities it was more expedient to do it with a small group and so so are we going to have a chance to I have a feeling it's going to come back before the committee oh, yes yep. yep thank you Supervisor Wild it looks like you had a question yes, sir. okay all right Supervisor Bramer hey, I'm afraid to ask but how are we doing Sheriff well, we answering the call we're going to always answer the call. We're doing fine. We'll, as I told you before, whoever you choose, it doesn't matter. To you. We, we as police are going to handle the calls. If it gets to a situation, 
and, and there's not a lot of you. Uh, you, you have four or five animal abuse, and that's what you're talking about. You're talking about animal abuse cases Correct. that need to be investigated by the police, by the county. We're responsible for that. Um, most of the town stuff, we'll call whoever the town has that does your animal control officer, whether it's private, whether they're hired by the town, or, or whoever, we'll keep doing that. If it becomes a major, let's say it becomes a major abuse case, Okay, which we've had a couple on in the past year and a half. If it becomes major, where there's going to be a lot of moving parts, where we're going to have to move animals, if we have to move and, and place them somewhere, we'll do our due diligence. If we need the expertise of somebody helping us, because we as police are not um, experts at investigating animal abuse, we're certainly experts at taking depositions, taking pictures, and the such. Um, but carrying the animals away, putting them places where we're not experienced to do that. If we get a case like that, we will call we will call somebody that's appropriate to, to help us with that. If there's an expense, I will let the, the county administrator know and say, listen, this is what we've got to do. We've got to move 10 animals. We need a professional out here. We're going to call somebody. And again, I don't mind who we call as long as it's legal we we call. Now, I'll take, uh, take it, but, you know, whoever you guys choose, who we want to contract with, but we're going to still, we'll still get the job done. Uh, I don't see any of the work not getting done. If it's minor, we'll handle it. If it's major, we'll, we'll approach that when it gets there, if it gets there. Does that, yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, I yeah. hope I was direct. Yeah. Okay. Any privilege of the floor? Okay. Hearing none, we'll um, close the Sheriff's Committee agenda and open the Office of Emergency Services. Brian, you have the floor. Thank you, Supervisor Leggett. The only thing I have for you is a resolution to extend our contract that we have currently with the I Am Responding Group Emergency Services Marketing. A little history, you know that at your last meeting this was discussed and the Sheriff suggested that we not renew this contract. Since that time, met with the sheriff, the under sheriff, the county administrator, supervisor Leggett, and um, we find that what was brought up by the sheriff really brought some things to light, which was important. And as a result of all those discussions that we've had um, and working with the iron responding group, we would like to extend that and continue it for another year. In order to do that, the county administrator asked that we do it on a calendar. Um, on the calendar year as compared to a fiscal year scenario. That would require us to have an additional three months of our existing contract. The company has uh, offered to do that at no charge, which is worth $4,800. And so all this resolution does allow us to extend the existing contract till January 1. On January 1, the contract will be renewed under the Office of Emergency Services instead of the Sheriff's Office it will be put in our budget. The dollar amount does not change uh, from what we paid in the previous year. And the important thing with this is a proviso from that group that we had, which I think is important. The onus of enforcing the use of this system and how it's going to be used is going to fall back on my office. Rather than the sheriff's office uh, trying to get the fire and EMS guys to do their thing, that's going to fall back on us. And we've already done a lot of things with that. Agencies that were not cooperating before now are. We have 100% of the MS agencies are committed to participating. Um, the numbers that were shown to you at the last meeting were not totally a good representation of what's going on. Um, but since then, uh, we're doing that. Uh, we've been tasked by the county administrator to have our MS people develop a set of standard operating procedures and uh, guidelines that each of the rescue squads when fire departments will have to follow. In other words, these are the minimum things that you have to do to participate with IM responding. If you use the system for inventory and tracking your training of your people and stuff, that's fine. But what's important is that we will be setting minimums that they have to supply so that the data that you have requested, we will be able to provide to you. And we will have all that in place by January 1. Thank you, Director LaFleur. I'm sorry, Supervisor, one more thing I do want to add. As a result of 
our discussions that I'm responding, they have just recently added another feature to their system, which is the NIFER system, which is the National Incident Fire Reporting System. Currently, all the fire departments, or most of them anyhow in our county, pay a service. They pay a company for the software that allows them to do that. And it can be anywhere from two to $6,000 a year. I am responding as providing that at no charge. They have a new system that's already been turned on for all the fire departments in our county. And it is at no cost to the county or to the individual agency. So that is an advantage. Uh, I like working with this company. They're very good. They're easy to work with. And they're very, uh, they offer very positive things. So I'm hoping that that will generate a savings to all the local fire agents. And they're also a New York State company, aren't they? They're yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Supervisor Wild and Supervisor oh. Simpson. Oh, move it. Yes. Thank you. Second. And, and second it. And then um, Mr. Wild. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brian, uh, minimum requirements, are those set by you yes. or by a committee of what the various squads feel that they can easily do? That's going to be set by us. And that's and already been discussed with the EMS Advisory Board, and we will be setting those requirements as to what we need to do. We're going to put together the SOPs and the guidelines. We will take that to the Sheriff's Office, uh, Communication Supervisor Jeffords and Under Sheriff Lamry, to make sure that what we're doing or what we're asking for is, uh, is concurred with them, and we'll go from there. So if I can follow up, there was some resistance to the use of this software prior. Yes. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, there were some implications that there might have been um, some uh, financial reasons why people didn't report. Is there a uh, expected cost benefit that each of these squads will, will be able to realize as a result of using this software? I don't know about a cost benefit. Cost savings? not necessarily savings unless they're paying for it themselves now. Correct. Um, if I may interject here, uh, Pottersville Fire Company used to pay out of their budget for that. Uh, now they do not have to, so there is a cost benefit on, on that. And they were using it to, to some degree, and perhaps not to the fullest, but it will come into more fuller at this point. Uh, they, they have found advantage for using it. So If I, if I may just follow up. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, you know, my sense was that this was going to help multiple squads rep responding to a, the same call, right? That's correct. So, I, and I think I mentioned this last committee meeting. When I was in Queensbury, I just happened to drive by an event at the uh, near the uh, town office building, and I think there were four squads that were showing up at about the same time. That's got to be expensive. That should save some money and reduce some of the cost to the various squads, and therefore the towns and the taxpayers. Are we going to be able to track some of this stuff? And it's, in my mind, it's not so much cost savings as it is patient care. Right now, we are not operating efficiently at times as far as who we're dispatching to a particular call, especially uh, over the weekend. We had several squads who were running between four, five, and six calls at a time simultaneously. Obviously, no squad has that many pieces of equipment or that much manpower. With this system and the dispatcher being able to spot from the screen what's available. There's no sense of toning out a squad that only has one crew on. If their squad is already committed, there's no sense of sitting there toning them out for an additional squad when we know they're not there. We're going to go to wherever the nearest available squad is to get them coming. And that's how that's where you see the multiple units. So there inherently there'll be some cost savings I would expect. Yes. Yes, because now instead of having a particular squad try to maintain two or three squad crews at the same time, we know we can draw from the others a much a much rep more rapidly. Supervisor Garrity? Well, I think the whole idea behind this is to prove the efficiency in the radio room to allow them to know who's who's got crews on duty. And um, I know uh, this should very much help that, you know, because they tone and tone and tone and somebody's not going to answer. Done properly, they'll have the information there. I know we use it in our fire department. We're using it now on a regular basis, and it's working fine. And, and there's a lot of good features of this. I mean, it's, you know, we have maps come up. If you have the tablets in your trucks now, your maps come up with all your hydrants, streets, locations. So it is, it's a good program, and, and I'm glad you got it straightened around. 
So the resolution that's before us is to extend, amend the contract to extend it to the end of the year at no cost. So um, before we call the, the vote, Supervisor Lowe. Chair, just one, one point with regard to both items. I think we need to make a note for Supervisor Beatty's committee shared services to keep track of any costs. So noted. Thank you, Supervisor Wild. Thank you, uh, Brian. Just one last question. In terms of the contract, it's very nice of this company to extend it for free. How much of an increase are we going to see next year? There's no increase. It's eighteen thousand. So it's going to be the same kind of lease. All right. Great. We're locked in for three years. Okay. Not that we we can renew or not renew. But the price is, I'm sorry, the, the cost is locked in for three years. Okay. Yeah, our, our idea in doing uh, just the remaining four months of this year is we'll see how successful we are at getting the, uh, the, the uh, services you know, u utilized the way they're supposed to be utilized, and then we make a decision in January as whether we want to continue. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Opposed? None. Motion carried. No, thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Just a follow up on it. You can wait till next week. No, Supervisor Wild, something before we close. Them. I just, uh, Brian, if you don't mind, there, there was an EMS task force that was started a while ago. I don't, I know, I know it's not really related to today's discussion, but what's the status of the task force? And I can answer. Craig, you met with them last week. I apologize, I was out of town that day, but right. Craig, I know, met with our EMS coordinators. That, that's right, uh, and I sent an email out to the task force uh, as, as well. You should have gotten that. Uh, okay. That gave the update. Uh, I didn't get it. Nah. Okay. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll go check. Thanks, Greg. So we, we met last week, uh, Mickey Guy and Chris Hawley. Uh, presented, there was um, Jack. What's Jack's last name? Tim's. Tim's. And um, one other. Uh, we went over the budgets. They had collected the budgets from all the agencies, reviewed them. They are going to um, uniformly put them to, together so that we see what all the, the various cost breakdowns are so that we can do a comparative analysis of what the projected um, system would, would look like on that so that's they're they're crunching the numbers at this point hopefully yeah, I, was, I was if you had gotten my email would have said uh, would like to call a meeting next week for that task force um, if we can get that together so yes I'd like Andrea. to respectfully request that the committee be provided with the numbers behind the numbers yeah. meaning what all the information that, that you guys were looking at that are going into the summary I would like for all of us Okay, so that, that would be the original budgets from each individual EMS squad. Okay, we can do that. You betcha. The, the EMS coordinators met with the squads, and as Supervisor Lady said, they, they went down down into the weeds, and what do you owe, what do you own, what are you leasing, way, way, way down, not just their normal budget that you might see at the beginning of the year. And that information, I think, is very valuable, and that's I think that's what you're asking that for. And with that's that's what's taken the time is to dig down into um, their actual finances, not just what their what their published budget is. Okay. Thank you. Yes, and that's what's taken the time is coordinating between Mickey and Chris and the others of meeting with the individual squads, coordinating those one-on-one -on -one meetings. So. They've gotten it together, and Supervisor Wild has found that email August that I set, sent out August 7th. Okay. okay, so there we go. So vindicated. Okay. <laughs> Good. No other business to come before the criminal justice, public safety at this time. Um, I'll call for privilege of the floor. Hearing none, call to adjourn. So moved by Supervisor Wild, second by Supervisor Bramer. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.